Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Biblio Fitness. And hope everyone's had a great weekend, a great day. Made some gains. Had a beautiful, well, it is a beautiful day out here. With a lot of stuff to do on a busy Sunday, but it is what it is. So today I wanted to talk about, uh, so I'm surprised I haven't really talked about it earlier, but uh, free speech. Because I've been watching the Alex Jones podcast with Joe Rogan and, um, so that's been, you know, uh, those are honestly some of my favorite podcasts from that amazing, you know, Joe Rogan has the best podcast. Like, it's the number one podcast for a reason. He's just, you know, he's on, on another level. So they, the the shit that they talk about and the conversations they get into and it just sucks that it's being attacked by, you know, far left imbeciles that want to eradicate free speech and and it just brings, they just brought out so many interesting rabbit holes to dive into as well. Um, if you really let that, you know, you let that, that train just, just, just keep going, you know? Um, cause he was talking a lot about like, like I was going to, I'm going to start reading, uh, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Uh, I got a coworker to start reading it and I forgot how good it was. And then it's. What a coincidence because I started watching Endgame again. Like, I haven't watched Endgame in a long time by Alex Jones. And he talks about, like, how they prep people. Like, you know, there's movies and there's books and there's other um, media outlets and, and artistic endeavors that are basically a, a a preview of what's coming. Like, to get the public ready. Like, Blade Runner and fucking Star Wars and... Well, I don't think Star Wars. But specifically this time, it's a book, and that's Brave New World. Because there was this whole conversation on how a totalitarian state was going to be, be created, and on what is it going to be based on? Like, what is going to be the foundation that is going to allow this totalitarian government to achieve control and, perpe uh, and perpetuity? Uh, so... You know, you have 1984 that goes along with, um, what's it called? With fear and repression, the, the, the Stalinist model through fear, repression, you know, nobody trusting anyone and it just slowly, gradually becoming, you know, it is slave, you know, it, it is servitude and, you know, how you have NSOC and you have Newspeak and, and you have, you know, the constant eradication of, of, of words and the vocabulary and with the eradication of these words if you don't have these words available and you're not going to be able to actually conceive the thoughts and ideas that can be contrived from those words and obviously the most most powerful thing in this world is an idea you know, it's, uh, corny as it may be but it's ideas that cause revolutions and it causes the upheavals of the world and, and you know or, of their own governments and the governments around them <clears throat> so that's the perspective of 1984. But then you go to Brave New World and it's much more subversive. Everyone's drugged up. Everyone is assigned. Like it's, it's a genetic thing. Like there's different tiers. Um, and it's already made for you. Like, like you, like you were set up already. Like that, that's basically as like, cause eugenics was a big, big scientific endeavor in the early 20th century. Some people don't know about that, but yes, there's a lot of racism. Like I've said before, there's nothing original about Adolf Hitler. Nothing original about Adolf Hitler. Racism was even used here in the United States for sterilization and, and uh, John, uh, I don't know why I keep saying, I uh, think of John Jones. Alex Jones keeps talking about these things and I know I just went off a tangent on these two books, but with Brave New World, I'm gonna talk about it more as I continue to read this book because it's honestly been a couple years since the last time. I've read it twice because the ending still confuses me, but hopefully with my newfound powers, um, I will finally be able to crack the code myself and not have to look it up on Google. You know, I don't want, like, that's why I don't really like listening, for example, like an example to like stoic podcasts. Like I'd rather figure it out myself and not be already kind of influenced and and be premeditated uh, like uh, like have a, this premonition i mean premeditatingly interpret what i'm going to be reading from marcus Aurelius. like i don't i don't want to be influenced by someone else you know that's not the point of stoicism i mean that's not the point of philosophy right that's when it asked for help with nietzsche even though it's a pain in the ass so on this tangent i'm sorry well, at, well 
all this tangent is basically that this is all because of Alex Jones. And I don't know if you guys know who Alex Jones is, but he's very famous, a very far right guy now. Uh -huh. Well, that's the image that's based on him. I don't follow InfoWars. Um, I really don't want to go down those rabbit holes because he, he says a lot of really crazy shit, but they turn out to be true. And that's something I've realized myself is that like the further down the rabbit hole you go, the more you read, the more you study, the more you listen to history and stuff like that, the more you begin to realize the, the, that that there is no limit to the human to the human barbarity, like none. We have done every single goddamn thing possible and then some, like, you know. And he just constantly, Alex Jones is banned because, you know, of free speech. He says some things that maybe other people didn't like. You know, we all know that tech companies are all left, you know, uh, woke, woke capital. You know, that's the big fad now. Um... And they banned his ass. Like, like I said, he says a lot of crazy shit, but a lot of shit turns out to be true if you do your research, if you actually look into it. Like Endgame, a lot of this stuff is weird and didn't come to pass, thankfully. Um, but some are. And he says a lot of shit in in the podcast that gets you thinking. And then, and the way I've seen it, and I guess because of how cynical I've become, and like you know. Um, it, it rings true more than ever because I've seen this podcast before many years, but obviously, you know, people I've changed quite a quite a bit and in a good way. Um, well, open for interpretation depending on the philosophical uh, avenue that I, I'm going to partake in. But <clears throat> he's just, you know, it, it's it, he's basically like the. The, the precedent that was made, the need that was the precedent that was needed in order to continue to ban other people, to shadow ban other people, and, and that's the problem. Like you know, free speech is being assaulted because people are saying hateful language or people are saying hateful things, and I just feel like most people in their naivety don't understand the price that you are going to have to pay to achieve this goal in this in its truest form, right? Like. The, the boundary is always going to be pushed. There's always going to be someone saying hateful shit. Like, we're well, just going to turn robots and turn into law-abiding citizens. Like, like, how are we going to come up with ideas? Like, this is going to be the downfall of the human consciousness, basically. Like, if we allow this to to continue to continue its rampant uh, uh, ascendance into the human conscious, uh, especially the, the man, like. I have people that defend that, and I'm like, dude, like that's but that's it's one of the prices of free speech that you are going to have to deal with people that are saying absurd shit. But it, it but that's just how it is. It's just you have to like how Joe Rogan says you have to combat hateful speech with good speech, with correct speech, with you know information and knowledge, and, re and just you know solid rebuttals in order to completely refute their 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 their, their arguments and, and just make them entirely irrelevant so it doesn't even matter like why do you have to ban like you don't know the price you have to pay in order to achieve that outcome and and it's a shame like Alex Jones yeah he's a little bit crazy but goddamn he's fun to watch he's funny as shit and he's just very insightful like you know he's the god he, I, I, I think he's like the godfather of conspiracy theories in this modern sense like um, he says some pretty wild stuff and it gets you thinking. And that's what we need. Uh, we definitely need to be more critical, much more critical and stop, you know, obviously focusing so much on social media and things of that nature and really begin to understand because an intelligent population is the only way fucking democracy works. And not this cover of bullshit that we've been dealing with, especially the past four decades. Um, like we're too stupid and the fact that we allow people that get you thinking and we allow these companies that are still don't have to abide by first amendment which is why they're allowed to do this and they're always going to retain that right because they own us uh i like it's like the whole hunter biden situation no one's gonna get fucking indicted or joe biden that's recently come out with the documents i don't even think he's going to jail that's how cynical i've become like rich people don't get 
prosecuted. They don't go to jail. You go to, like, once you reach a certain point, you are too big to fail and too big to jail. Okay? Um, this example, like, you can look into countless examples that, that augment that, that argue, like, that augment what I just said. It, it, it's the truth. Corporations own us. Corporations own our politicians. Our politi like uh, uh, politicians are nothing but mouthpieces. It's corporations. And then you can look into the World Economic Forum that they're trying to do now with the whole stakeholder model where corporations are basically going to be able to legitimately, like now with legitimacy behind them, able to really affect fucking state policy and food and agriculture and revenue and, and economy because they're the biggest stakeholders. They're they're ratifying their power, and uh, and the fact that they're we're allowing these fuckers to eliminate free speech, and we're just going by it because we're just getting so retarded now. Ugh. Oh, God. oh my God. Um, we could just go out for. <laughs> um, it, we're just so consumer. Focus now. We're nothing but consumer animals constantly having to buy Gucci belts and a thousand dollar goddamn Jordans to prove to everybody how cool you are. And and the truth is slipping more and more away. And like all these dystopian future novels are becoming more and more relevant, which is why I'm probably going to read 1984 again after I finish reading Brave New World and also Animal Farm. That's basically like the Holy Trinity. They're not, they're not huge books to get through anyways, which is, I'm going to do that after I complete certain missions or uh, that I have to perform today. I'm going to get on some, I'm going to start Brave New World. It's going to be fun. But yeah, man, uh, free speech, uh, there's a reason it's in the Constitution. Now, you know, we can have a whole argument on the basis of the Constitution and what, what the Founding Fathers were hoping to achieve with the foundation of this new state. Uh, but, you know, that's the topic for another time. <clears throat> but it's free speech because that's where ideas come from. You have to have these arguments. You have to have these debates. You have to have these lively discussions in this symbi and, and, and this relationship that we call civilization. Now, we humans are interconnected and our conversation and our actions are interconnected. You know, the whole butterfly effect. And, and the fact that you allow corporations, you allow a certain individual with their own individual prerogatives. Like, you really think that these people are looking out for our best interests? Like, how naive and stupid do you have to be to actually allow that sort of doctrine to ingratiate, like, for you to ingratiate yourself into that doctrine? Like, it's ridiculous. It's preposterous, you know? Um, we can't allow that to happen, and we already did. The precedent has been set like the Roman Empire or some shit. Uh, it's a shame that someone like him has been, has been, you know, repressed. Well, not repressed, but like suppressed. And and he's been, you know, taken down from Instagram. Is, is he off Instagram? Probably. I didn't look at that, but he's probably, he's probably off Instagram for sure. Um, He's off all of these things. And, other, and and people get shadow banned for being right, for being gun activists. And like Tim Kennedy, I think he's going on the podcast. I, I might be, I think it's Tim Kennedy that he once talked about him getting shadow banned because he's a you know, Second Amendment guy. He's a, you know, he likes to, he's an outdoorsman. He likes to hunt. He's a, you know, he's a right guy like on the right spectrum in terms of politics. You know... Yeah, he's been shadow man. Like he complained about that, and other people have. So, it, it's this is dangerous, bro. This is really fucking dangerous that people have to be watchful what they talk about. If not, they're gonna get shadow man. Like you have a social, political, economical, like they, uh, per, uh, prerog like you're forcing all these different aspects to abide by these rules. Because if not, you're not gonna make an income. No one's gonna listen to you. And you're just going to wallow in oblivion if you don't do what they say. And that's ridiculous. And that's why it's important, I guess, to make fuck you money. You have so much money, you play their game, and you beat them at their game. And you can do whatever you want. Like Joe Rogan, for example. Um, he has that fuck you money. He talks about whatever the fuck he wants to talk about. And he's still the biggest platform out there in podcast world and social media. Because like, he has that fuck you money. And he's awesome. And I love him. Uh, 
<laughs> in a cool way, obviously. <laughs> I love that podcast. I'm glad I found my love for it again. I mean, it brings on such interesting characters and such interesting individuals, very in- insightful individuals. And he does a great service to the community. And, and I'm sure that he's trying to do the same thing in a way. And he is agreeing with me and that we need to be promoting more awareness. And he's a very, like, he likes to say he's a moral, but he's read books and he's looked into shit, you know. Because that's what you should be doing, you know. Not, you know, ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is slavery. You know. What is the thing from Insuck again? Uh, peace is war ignorance is strength freedom is slavery uh-huh. I might have gotten the three people. exactly ignorance is strength yeah god damn I hope they bring them back up I hope we bring them back sometime it'll be cool not having them Go to info. It's just he, he says some weird stuff about vampires and things like that. Like, I feel like he just extrapolates to a whole different world. Because I feel like after a while, you do suffer from mild psychosis. Like, and you're rambling and you're rambling and you're rambling and you're rambling. And you're just, you know, I guess you just, I guess he, he has to be just placing himself in some sort of trance where he just, he goes off. Um, but, I just want to talk about that right quick, man. Now, because you know, it's just a, it's a shame that people really have to abide by rules, and and they and the people in power really have a grip on reality, where they are now able to achieve many terrible things and pull it off, and have the public behind them. Um, they're achieving total control, and more and more every day, they're getting closer to those goals. So um, it's it's quite terrifying. They now have the means, due to the mass globalization of the economy, due to the mass globalization of countries. You know, like these autocrats and these technocrats are not. You know, they're not even. They don't care about nation. They just care about money and creating multinational corporations that will rule the world. And that's something this guy talks about very early on, which is Alex Jones. And that's definitely coming to fruition. Well, I'll leave you guys at that. I didn't know it was going to go up this long. So, hope you all have a great day. Hope you all make some gains. Even though, I'm still, damn, I'm still kind of scrawny, though. Oh, well. There's always another day to make gains. So, love you all.